Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the very kind invitation and special thank uh, for the honorary membership. Uh, I started to do arthroscopy about uh, 26 years before and uh, now in our institute we do about 2,500 surgeries per year. So all these surgeries are arthroscopic surgeries and about 70-80% of them uh, is performed uh, as an ambulatory surgery or a one-day surgery. Uh, I would like to introduce something about uh, our scientific work. This is a part of the arthroscopic uh, activities and uh, this is the cartilage repair. The basic problem is well known and uh, this uh, is determined by uh, the very poor uh, regenerative characteristics of the hyaline cartilage. If we have a small focal defects uh, on the weight bearing surface, uh, this may lead to uh, an advanced osteoarthritis requiring uh, a total knee replacement in a relatively short period. Based on this uh, problem, uh, there were several old techniques to uh, prevent the joint from uh, the degeneration. Uh, these are the bone marrow stimulation techniques, so these are the old types of uh, cartilage repair. All of these techniques uh, aim to provide a fibrocartilage type repair in the field of the defected area. And based on the uh, poor biomechanic characteristics of the fibrocartilage, this is only a temporary delay in uh, the degenerative process. That's why uh, in the last 20, 25 years, a lot of efforts have been expressed to uh, provide something better. Uh, and this is the hyaline cartilage. So all these procedures uh, uh, called new ways, new procedures, aim to create a hyaline uh, cartilage in the defected area. One option among them is to transplant osteochondral, allografts, osteochondral autografts. And the technique itself uh, is about uh, 50 years old and was uh, published by Hungarian authors, Pap and Kromperher from Debrecen. They have introduced their idea to transplant osteochondral autografts, not only uh, by experimental, but also clinical uh, data. Several other authors uh, confirmed uh, their observation that, the, uh, and this was uh, uh, the survival of the transplanted hyaline cartilage. However, the technique itself was not really popular, not really useful in the uh, daily orthopedic practice because uh, the possible donor site, the less or non-weight bearing surface of the knee was definitely uh, less and uh, uh, regarding the shape definitely different from the recipient site. In 1991 we had the idea to change a little bit the technique and instead of transplantation of one big block, we developed a mosaic-like technique. We harvested small size cylindrical osteochondral grafts from the less weight-bearing uh, surface of the trochlea. And these grafts were transplanted into uh, the defected area in a mosaic-like fashion. And uh, we thought that these changes uh, may uh, manage both of uh, the previously mentioned problems. After some preclinical experimental work, we started this technique uh, in the clinical practice at 6 February 1992. During the procedure, the first task is to clean the defected area. After that, we perform uh, an abrasion arthroplasty uh, to refresh the bony base of the defect to uh, remove the sequester layer. Uh, the next task uh, is to harvest small size cylindrical osteochondral grafts from the less weight bearing periphery of the uh, trochlea. Uh, usually, no, it doesn't work. Uh, 
uh, usually uh, this should be uh, just above uh, the linear terminalis. And uh, the final step is to implant these grafts into drill holes uh, to the defected area. All these implantations should be performed perpendicular to the surface. Uh, the final result could be uh, composite cartilage consisted of mainly from the transplanted highland cartilage, but a certain amount of fibro cartilage may develop from the refreshed bony base uh, of the defected area. Naturally, different uh, sizes and, different, and combination of these different sizes may lead to uh, a better filling rate. In an average, 80% uh, percent filling uh, should be enough uh, for the long-lasting success. We carried out uh, a lot of experimental work. Uh, we have uh, started with dogs and horses. The dogs were operated uh, by an open surgery and the horses were uh, uh, operated arthroscopically. The horses have been evaluated uh, by a computerized uh, motion analyzing system in an independent institute. And both in the dog and horse groups, uh, we performed control arthroscopies from four weeks up to one year in different intervals and harvested biopsy materials uh, for histological evaluation. To the left, you can see a four weeks old implantation. Uh, at this time, there is a complete bony healing between the transplanted graft and uh, the host tissue. And on the larger magnification, you can observe a small amount of fibro cartilage under the gap between the cartilage parts. And two weeks later, this fibro cartilage will grow into the gap and uh, will fill the gap. And at eight weeks, we'll also eliminate the small sized contour differences. So we can state a composite cartilage layer will develop after the implantation. These are one-year-old biopsy specimens from the transplanted hyaline cartilage. To the, less, to the left is a collagen-specific staining. To the right is a glucosaminoglycan-specific staining. And at polarized light, you can observe an extendal, uh, extra, um, excellent longitudinal structure of uh, the extracellular matrix. A key question uh, is uh, the behavior of the interfaces. To the left, you can observe two, two slides representing a deep matrix integration between the transplanted hyaline cartilage and uh, the fibro cartilage tissue. If the implantation is technically not perfect, you can observe a small cleft on the surface. This may be uh, dangerous regarding the shear forces. However, in an optimal situation, uh, we can also observe uh, hyaline to hyaline deep matrix integration. The behavior of the donor sites is very similar to the pre-drilling. These holes will fill up by cancellous bone in a four weeks period and will be covered by an initial repair tissue and thanks to a well adapted uh, rehabilitation, a fibro cartilage type repair may uh, develop. This is the summary of our early experimental work, consistent survival of the transplanted hyaline cartilage, deep matrix integration between the graft and the host tissue, and fiber cartilage coverage of the donor sites. We published these observations in different journals and continued our work by cadaver studies. And uh, this uh, this, uh, cadaver these cadaver studies uh, led to uh, development of uh, good instrumentation, not only for open, but also for arthroscopic procedures. These are the main requirements at the indications. We don't think that the mosaic plastic could be uh, a universal solution for uh, all type of uh, cartilage defects, but we think that uh, this is a good tool to treat symptomatic focal chondral and osteochondral defects of the weight-bearing surfaces. 
the best extent of the defect is between one to four square, uh, four square centimeter. The age should be under 50, 55. However, we have uh, extended uh, the age limit up to 60. And naturally, a parallel treatment of the underlying cause is always necessary. In the early clinical practice, we started uh, to do this procedure from a big anteromedial incision, and we treated defects on the femoral condyles, on the patellofemoral joint, and by a little bit modified technique uh, on the tibial surfaces. Uh, after the first good clinical results, uh, the indication have been extended to other joints. The first uh, was the ankle joint, so these are OCD defects, so osteochondritis dissecans defects uh, on the medial talar dome. As you can see, the approach is a medial malar osteotomy. This is a, a lateral defect on the lateral talar dome. Uh, in such cases, we can avoid uh, the lateral malar osteotomy. And in selected cases, we can use this technique uh, in the hip joints. So this is uh, a small size avascular necrotic lesion on the anti anterior surface, uh, anterior loading surface of the femoral head. For such a procedure, we have to dislocate the hip. This is an open procedure. And for all indications outside the knee, we have to harvest the grafts from the knee because the knee has uh, proper donor sites uh, for these procedures. Uh, principally, we don't use this technique to treat uh, chondral defects on the upper extremity. However, for small-sized osteochondral defects of the elbow and the shoulder, uh, for patients having a high level of sports activities, we still do this technique, such in this case. This is a young gymnast having had a osteochondral defect on the capitulum humeri. The other main direction of the development was to minimize the approach and to bring these patients to uh, an ambulatory surgery system or to a one-day surgery system. And the first step was to develop a mini arthrotomy, mosaic plastic technique. We also developed a special minimal invasive uh, retractor, such like the Jacoscope. And now about 80% of our cases are treated arthroscopically in the knee. You can follow the steps of the procedure. As I stated before, we uh, refresh the bony base of the defect by an arthroscopic bar. The next step is to uh, plan the, the optimal filling. And from the same small incision at extended knee, we can reach the medial border of the medial femoral condyle. And, uh, we can harvest uh, grafts by a tubular chisel. <clears throat> After that, we bend the knee again, and we introduce a universal uh, guide uh, having uh, a window. And through this window, we can uh, follow the steps to drill uh, recipient holes, to dilate these holes to have an easier insertion of the grafts. And finally, we implant the first graft. And all the steps are then repeated to fill up uh, the whole defect. And you can imagine that the dilation of the second hole will impact the bone to the previously implanted graft. And this uh, can provide a very safe press fit fixation, uh, representing some advantages in the early rehabilitation. The treatment of the underlying cause should be addressed at the same step uh, with the mosaic plasty. So in most of our cases, we <coughs> perform uh, ACR reconstruction, uh, realignment of stotomies, and meniscus surgery as uh, biomechanical problems related to the cartilage defect. The rehabilitation is, a, is an accelerated, accelerated rehabilitation protocol. We start uh, an immediate uh, full range of motion uh, and order two, uh, three weeks non weight bearing period. The next step is a partial weight bearing period with 30 to 40 kilogram. And from the beginning of the fourth or fifth week, uh, we can start the full weight bearing. The normal daily activity can be achieved till the end of the second month. And sports activity can be started from four uh, to six months, depending on the size, the type, 
and the exact location of the defect. We published in our, in, in our uh, initial reports, we published about 90% uh, good and excellent rate, and all uh, the multicenter studies confirmed these observations. So German, uh, Scandinavian, Italian, and uh, US studies uh, published the same uh, clinical outcome. And uh, we published uh, several details of the indication pitfalls, curves uh, uh, of the technique, and uh, based on these uh, publications, now all the handbooks, the surgical handbooks, contain a mosaic plasty chapter to uh, provide the proper support uh, for the surgeons. Uh, there are also some basic science uh, uh, support behind this technique. Uh, <clears throat> most of them are performed uh, in, in different institutes, but we also perform uh, some experimental work to, to check and to improve the technique. I have a, a great teacher from Toronto, Canada, called Alan Gross, uh, who is an excellent surgeon, and it's a very clever guy. And uh, he has a very famous statement, like, uh, nothing, ruins, nothing ruins good results like follow-up. Uh, based on uh, his famous statement, we perform an ongoing and a continuous uh, evaluation by different Im imaging techniques, such like MRI. This is uh, a 20 weeks old uh, implantation. This is a 24 weeks old implantation. And we have also performed more than 100 control arthroscopies uh, in different intervals. These are the so-called early control arthroscopies after 8, 10, and 12 weeks. At this time, you can observe a congruent surface, but as you can see, the appearance of the uh, repair area, area is a heterogeneous appearance. So con consisted of transplanted uh, cart uh, hyaline cartilage blocks and some kind of relatively soft repair uh, tissue between uh, the grafts. However, uh, thanks to the loading, and uh, the fiber cartilage uh, development uh, uh, by the uh, well-adapted rehabilitation protocol, uh, the appearance in a later period after one year, five years, eight years is much more homogeneous because of the uh, collagen uh, product in uh, the intermediate repair tissue. These are donor sites after uh, one year and after two years, and uh, we also performed uh, an objective measurement of the elasticity of these uh, types of cartilages, not only on the recipient side, but also on the donor side, and we observed about uh, a 10 Newton resistance uh, at 10 Newton pressure, and this is very similar uh, to the characteristics of the hyaline of the healthy hyaline cartilage. These are some video shots uh, about our control arthroscopy. This is a four weeks or four months of uh, implantation. As you can see, the surface is congruent, but as you can see, the intermediate tissue is relatively soft. This is a one year old uh, case, and uh, you can see that the quality of the intermediate tissue is much more fibrous. This is a one-year-old donor size. This is a real fibrocartilage tissue at the level of the surrounding surface, but this is soft. Uh, this was the donor side. And uh, a, a few shots from, from the later period, four and a half years old uh, case, uh, a perfect homogeneous surface uh, thanks to the uh, proper implantation. And this is a very similar case after five years and the last shot will be an ankle mosaic plasty after two years. Uh, this is the medial uh, malleolus to the left and the medial uh, talar dome uh, transplanted by two plaques uh, implanted because of uh, OCD defect. A uh, few statistical data, uh, 21 years old follow-up, we performed uh, more than 1,400 surgeries. 
and uh, these surgeries have been evaluated in different uh, subgroups. The biggest group was the femoral con uh, condylar subgroup. Uh, we had uh, about 90, 92% good and excellent outcome. The tibial uh, implantations have a uh, very similar outcome, a little bit, uh, uh, little bit uh, uh, lower success rate, but uh, nearly 90%. The less favorable outcome is for the patellar and the trochlear implantations, 76% uh, good and excellent, and most of them is only good and not excellent. Uh, all, the, all types of cartilage repair have uh, moderate results in the patellofemoral joint because uh, the success of a cartilage repair depends, uh, depends not only on the type of the cartilage repair, but also uh, the proper addressing of uh, the biomechanical background. We have very good procedures to uh, reconstruct the stability of a knee and to uh, correct the malalignments of the, of the knees. That's why the uh, femor, uh, femoral and the tibial implantation uh, have a better uh, biomechanical support, but in the patellofemoral joint, uh, we have uh, less uh, successful procedures to address the uh, uh, loading problems. The best outcome is for the ankle group, uh, 94 uh, person good and excellent. According to the Hanover scale, it's a very strict uh, scoring system, so this is really a very good clinical outcome. The major complications are on uh, an acceptable range uh, and not related to this procedure, so these are general uh, complications. As we started uh, the technique in the clinical practice, we, we, we were worried about the the potential donor site morbidity. So I may, stay, uh, I may state that the long-term donor site morbidity uh, is pretty acceptable. This is only 3% according to the Bandy score, and uh, this is not only my uh, statement, but uh, most of the other studies publish the same uh, outcome. However, we have had some kind of early donor site morbidity, and this is the extreme bleeding from uh, the empty donor site. This was about 7%. Based on this uh, uh, extreme uh, bleeding to the joint requiring aspiration or cool therapy or some kind of uh, uh, some uh, other interventions, uh, we were thinking about to fill these donor sites by, uh, by a biodegradable material providing support for the tissue uh, regeneration and to prevent the joint from the extreme bleeding. Uh, from the very early period, uh, we started to investigate different biodegradable materials such like polylactate, polygluconate, uh, compressed collagen and hydroxyapatite. And we have found uh, acceptable uh, outcome in the animal trials. But the quality of the repair tissue on the surface was not, uh, was not really good. And that's why we continued our work and uh, in collaboration with the Cambridge University and the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, we uh, developed a biphasic uh, biodegradable device to fill the empty donor site, and this is consisted of collagen, glucosaminoglycan, and calcium phosphate. We also developed a special tool to uh, implant this uh, device during an arthroscopic uh, surgery, and introduce this technique into the clinical practice. To the right, uh, you can observe how these grafts will impregnate by uh, blood in a few minutes. And uh, after a one-year uh, follow-up, we performed contra-arthroscopies, harvested biopsy material, and uh, evaluated them uh, histologically. We observed a nice uh, degradation of the scaffold, uh, perfect bone formation in the depths, and 
the quality of the repair tissue on the surface was much better than before uh, because this repair tissue contained uh, uh, more collagen fiber than the so-called monophasic uh, uh, scaffolds. In another study, we tried to check the durability of the mosaic plastic results. In homogenized subgroups, uh, we evaluated different types of cartilage repair. These were the pre-drilling, abrasion arthroplasty, microfracture, and mosaic plasty. At the evaluation, we observed that in the early uh, clinical uh, follow-up, uh, in a six months, one year period, most of these arthroscopic procedures uh, resulted in uh, an acceptable or good clinical outcome. However, in the long term, after two years, three years, four years, five years, the other type of cartilage repairs uh, provided uh, fiber cartilage coverage, uh, gave an decreasing uh, outcome uh, comparing to the mosaic plasty uh, which kept uh, its, uh, clinic, uh, its advantageous clinical outcome. Uh, finally, a uh, very strict evaluation of uh, this procedure is to uh, evaluate the results in case of high professional athletes. In three Hungarian institutes, we evaluated uh, 354 cases uh, of high professional athletes uh, treated by mosaic plasty. Most of the procedures were performed on the medial femoral condyle, but we also evaluated lateral femoral condylar defects and uh, other types of defects. We operated a little bit more male than female, and the most uh, important feature of this uh, group was the relatively high level of uh, presence of uh, degenerative uh, changes, so early osteoarthritic changes. Normally, this is not an indication for the mosaic plasty because uh, we uh, recommend to use this technique only to treat focal chondral defects without advanced degeneration. However, in this group, because of the high motivation of the patients, we uh, still perform the procedure to extend dire sports carrier. Uh, the average defect size was two, two and a half square centimeter. And as I stated before, we have operated a little bit, a little bit more male than female. Uh, the average follow-up time was about 10 years. We haven't had septic or thromboembolic complications. Our patients uh, had uh, an average five months uh, time, um, rehabilitation time uh, till they returned to their sports activities. In 64%, uh, they returned to uh, their previous sports activity. 13 of them participated in uh, the last four Olympic Games. One is a gold medalist. 19% returned to a lower level of sports activity, and only 17% had to finish uh, his or her sports career, and 8% uh, had worse uh, uh, outcome than uh, we expected. Finally, the big question is what should we do? Uh, what kind of cartilage repair uh, should be selected for our patients? We have the traditional techniques such like abrasion arthroplasty, we have the chondrocyte transplantation to treat uh, extended defects, we have periosteal flapping procedures, biodegradable materials, and naturally we have uh, the osteochondral autograft transplantation. The decision making depends uh, on uh, several viewpoints. Uh, there are many, many uh, viewpoints regarding the size, type, location of the defect, uh, the activity level of the patient, and actually the costs uh, uh, should be also considered, uh, and the length of uh, the rehabilitation may have uh, a very important uh, uh, aspect. I think that the size of the defect is a determining uh, factor. So 
mosaic plasty is a procedure for small and medium sized uh, defects. We think that for the very small defects, uh, a biodegradable device could uh, provide an acceptable quality of repair tissue. For the medium sized defects, uh, we still think that the mosaic plastic could be an optimal uh, indication. In case of degenerative uh, uh, problems, uh, we can uh, return back to the old techniques such like microfracture, providing fiber cartridge type repair. If the defect is superficial and extended, uh, a chondrocyte transplantation can provide the, the best clinical outcome. And in case of a deep and extended defect, uh, transplantation of fresh osteochondral allograft uh, can provide the best uh, outcome. Finally, a few case reports uh, from the past. This is a story of a 26 years old uh, nice gymnast who had a two square centimeter cartilage defect on the medial femoral condyle. Uh, she also had a torn ACL. At that time, uh, we used the bone tendon bone procedure uh, to uh, perform ACR reconstructions. And at uh, the same time, at the parallel with the ACR reconstructions, uh, we performed the mosaic plasty on the medial femoral condyle. Uh, after the rehabilitation, in five months, she returned uh, to the training. And uh, 14 months later, she was the best uh, team member in the Atlanta Olympic Games. And uh, now she works as a trainer in California. And she is complaint free. The next case is a story uh, of a 27 years old soccer player having had a three and a half square centimeter cartilage defect on the lateral femoral condyle. Uh, he had a mini arthrotomy mosaic plasty uh, procedure and uh, he achieved a full recovery. And as you can see, seven months later, he returned back to the national team and protected us from the national tragedy against the Romanian team. So summarizing, uh, autologous osteochondral mosaic plasty uh, has now uh, more than 20 years follow-up. Uh, and based on this follow-up, uh, we uh, can state that this uh, procedure is still an alternative in the treatment of small and medium-sized uh, focal chondral and osteochondral defects of the weight-bearing surfaces. The main advantages uh, of this technique uh, is a highly likely surface, and this is a one-step procedure. We can combine it with other procedures. This can be performed as a one-day surgery if this is an arthroscopic procedure or uh, require a, a very short hospital stay, uh, and the rehabilitation is uh, really quick. Thank you for your kind attention. Carla, would you like to join as well?